Crossover day has finally arrived as we find out which bills will be moving on to the other chamber and which ones will fade away. While not quite the spectacle as the rush to the finish line we'll see on Sine Die, there were certainly some interesting developments this week. Here are your updates. There's another week and another longtime legislator announcing retirement as Gloria Butler, the Senate Minority Leader and a Democrat from Stone Mountain, said that she would not seek re-election for a 14th term. Senator Butler has served in the Senate since 1999. The final version of Georgia's mid-year budget was approved by the General Assembly. New spending will include adjustments for school enrollment growth, supplements for K-12 teachers and university employees, as well as renovations to the state capitol complex. The impacts of Georgia's Certificate of Need regulations have been a legislative priority as well as a topic covered extensively by the Foundation for years now. The House finally passed a version of CON reform with House Bill 1339. While this bill, sponsored by Representative Butch Parrish, would remove certain CON regulations, it preserves them in other circumstances. It should be noted that this approach is less expansive than what was recommended by last year's Senate Study Committee on CON. After last week's narrow passage out of the Senate Education and Youth Committee, the Boundless Opportunities for Georgians Act was tabled on Monday. However, it passed the Senate on Tuesday by a vote of 38 to 14. Senate Bill 147 was authored by Senator Sean Still, and it allows for interdistrict transfers for K-12 students. On Tuesday, the Senate approved a resolution to amend the Constitution to allow for sports betting in Georgia. This measure now needs two-thirds of the House vote before it would go to the ballot in November. A contentious vote in the Senate ultimately saw the passage of the Georgia Consumer Privacy Protection Act, Senate Bill 473 from Senator John Albers, claims to provide protections for consumers' personal online data. House Bill 971, the Firearm Safe Handling and Secure Storage Tax Credit Act, overwhelmingly passed the House on Tuesday. This would allow Georgians who purchase a gun safe or enroll in firearm safety training to claim up to $300 in income tax credits. The bill was sponsored by Representative Mark Newton. And finally, for the second year in a row, the effort to allow craft brewers to sell directly to consumers appears to have failed. The Senate Regulated Industries Committee did not advance Senate Bill 163, authored by Senator Chuck Huffstetler after a February 6 hearing. For more updates from the Capitol, be sure to check out the At the Capitol section of our Friday Facts. Subscribe to our weekly email to get more updates like this, as well as other Foundation news and publications. You guessed it every Friday.